we're going to talk about static friction for just a minute and what the coefficient of static friction really means. Here's our moving man and he's working with a piano, back breaking work. We'll notice that the weight or the force of gravity is uh, equal and opposite in direction of the normal force. And what he's going to do is he's going to try and move this piano and look at me. Okay, so he's applying a force in one direction and friction is pushing back in the other direction. And as he applies more force to the piano, it's not moving. That means friction's pushing back. Eventually, if he's strong enough and if the piano's right, it does start to move. But there's a point at which it just starts to move, and that's where static friction starts to come in. Okay, so here's our object. Here's our person pushing on that object. Here's a frame of reference. They apply a force in that direction, and there it is, the applied force, and here comes the static force. So the coefficient of static friction comes at that place just before the object starts to move. Static force. The object is just starting to move. And that's where we get our coefficient of static friction. The coefficient of static friction is actually the ratio of the applied force to the normal force. So here's our definition. There's a coefficient of mu sub s, and that is equal to the ratio of the applied force to the normal force. And you'll notice that we're only interested in the magnitude of those quantities, not the fact that they're vector quantities. So for example, if the uh, force of gravity on an object was equal to 100 newtons and the applied force was 60 newtons, then my equation would end up looking like this. And ultimately, my coefficient of friction would look like this. It would be 0.6.